everyone and welcome into another reaction of The Last of Us. Today I'll be watching episode 3 called Long Long Time. My name is Kale. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited for this episode because I see that it is well over an hour long and I am living for longer TV show episodes. It's like watching a movie basically so very excited to check this out this reaction is going to be spoiler free i do know the stories of both video games very very well but to not spoil anyone else i will not be talking about anything coming in the future i will keep my reactions uh spoiler free i sometimes do make like small comparisons to the game uh if i do want to talk about spoilers that will be at the very very end of the video and it will be time stamped out so look for that and with that i don't have anything else left to say if you are someone that prefers full-length watch long reactions Actions. You can find those over on Patreon, and if you do enjoy this video by the end, make sure to subscribe so you can come back for more Last of Us reactions, among many other things. And with that, let's press play. Oh, we're in the mountains. Hmm. Ten miles west of Boston. Brother, this is the Rockies, not the Appalachians. The Appalachians west of Boston. Only I've been in the woods. Pretty, isn't it? More bucks than I thought. <laughs> Look, I've been thinking about- I want your sorry. I wasn't gonna say I'm sorry. I was gonna say that I've been thinking about what happened. Nobody made you or Tess take me. So don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. It's not wrong. How much longer? Five hour hike. We can manage that. Imagine going on a hike and then you come across them and the filming crew. Wouldn't that be wild? That would have made my day. What are you looking out for? People. Oh, your brother Frank nice? Frank is. How'd you get that scar on your head? Someone shot at me and missed. See, that's cool. <laughs> Shoot back? <laughs> yeah. You get him? No, I missed two. You know, seeing as it's just the two of us, I was thinking I should no. pro- Patient Sally. Lean back a minute. I gotta grab some stuff I stashed. We had supplies on roots. Guess we find ourselves short on gear. Cause... No way. You ever play this one? You forgot where you put your stuff. No, it's been a couple of years. Okay, well, I'm gonna take a look around, see if there's anything good. Is there anything bad in here? Just you. Ah, getting funnier. It's the same joke, though. Oh. You right back there? Yeah. You have a flashlight. Use it. There we go. Oh, boy. I really hope there's nothing uh, bad down here. Although I feel like if there was, they'd probably have died. Fuck yeah. Nice. No. No, 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 no. I was just saying. <laughs> Fuck no. Ew. Whoa. Oh my god. Wow. Holy. Oh, look at this. What an excellent makeup job. That was so gross, but so cool. Oh my gosh. Ellie. Go pull her up out of there. Picked over my ass. No, oh, never mind. What a great thing to find. What are you doing? Not much ammo out there for this thing. Makes it mostly useless. Oh, you're just gonna leave it there. <laughs> no. Patience, Ellie. Holy shit. You found one of those? Wow. A few times, sure. So lucky. Dude, you got to go up in the sky. Perspective. No one's infected with cordyceps. Everybody's fine. Then all at once. How did it even start? Best guess, cordyceps mutated. Some of it got into the food supply. Probably a basic ingredient like flour or sugar. There were certain brands of food that were sold everywhere, all across the country, across the world. Pancake mix. So the tainted food all hits the store shelves around the same time Thursday. Friday night, September 26, 2003. And by Monday, everything was gone. Thanks. Sure. Nice to hear that from Joel's point of view or like explaining that. There's stuff up there you shouldn't see. Can it hurt me? No. Might just be traumatic maybe, I don't know. Whatever it was, I think it's gone. Not gone, really. About a week after outbreak day, soldiers went through the countryside, evacuated the small towns, told you you were going to a QZ and you were, if there was room, if there wasn't. These people weren't sick? Damn. No, probably not. I kill them. Dead people can't be infected. 
Oh no, another flashback? Uh oh. Not today, you new world order jack boot fox. <laughs> Hell yes. Ooh, clever. He was prepared. I love that we're getting scenes like this. This makes me so happy. I loved all of that. That was that was really good. Oh, that looks so good. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> That's his TV now. <laughs> it doesn't get old. Amazing. Time jump to 2007. I'm not infected. Are you armed? No. Why did you take that long to answer? I don't know. I, I thought about lying for some reason, but, but I, I'm just trying to get to Boston. We started with 10, but yeah, I'm, I'm alone. Stop there. Boston is that way. You can make it by nightfall. I'm really hungry. I haven't eaten in two days. Doesn't sound very long out loud, does it? <laughs> it feels long. I'm letting you go, so go. All right. Look, first, my name's Frank. Oh, yeah? yeah? Here's the thing, Frank. If I feed you, then every bum you talk to about it is going to show up here looking for a free lunch. And this is not an Arby's. Well, Arby's didn't have free lunch. It was a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, he's by himself anyway. Does he even know anyone anymore? I left some clothes here for you. Thank you. Almost done. Although, can I have five more minutes? This is amazing. Oh, a hot shower like that would feel incredible. I feel like we take that for granted. This is a really nice house. I feel like coming across a place like this would feel so, it would feel so homesick even though it's not your house, you know? Like, just, yeah. <laughs> that looks good too. Gosh darn. <laughs> Frick's like, oh my god. I bet he hasn't had a meal like that in years. Four years, to be exact. Mm. What the fuck? Everything tastes good when you're starving. I mean, yeah, true, but... Not like this. <laughs> a man who knows to pair rabbit with a Beaujolais. I know, I don't seem like the type. No, you do. Thank you. You're welcome. Is this the first person he's seen in those four years? Like a non-infected, I mean? Maybe. So I guess I'll be going then. But first, I've been staring at this the whole time. 1948. Wow. You know how much these are worth? Currently nothing. Oh. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> oh my god. It's my favorite. I love that the subtitles just said singing badly. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Sorry. Not this song. Not this song. Well, I'm not a professional. Well, neither am I, but... Mm, that song means something. And then I'll leave. Love will abide for a long, long time. So, who's the girl? There is no girl. I know. What's your name? Forgot he hadn't told him that yet. Bill. Go take a shower, Bill. Oh, this is so sweet. I can't handle the cute. Have you ever done this before? With a girl a long time ago. No, but so I'm gonna start with the simple things. <laughs> okay. But before I do, I want you to know that I'm not a whore. So if I do this, I'm gonna stay for a few more days. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, fuck you! Who cares what they look like? I do! Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I live in this world, you live in a psycho bunker where 9-11 was an inside job and, and the government are all Nazis. The government are all Nazis! Well, yeah, now, but not then. I am asking for some paint, paying attention to things. It's how we show love. This is my street, too. Just let me love it the way I want to. 
And I'm fixing up some of the shops. Just the, the wine shop and the furniture store and the clothing boutique. <laughs> are, are we hosting formal garden parties now? No. He just wants something to do. He just wants to keep busy. We're going to make friends. And we will invite them to visit. We don't have friends. Well, I've actually been talking to a nice woman on the radio. You what? Well, this really is. Just oh, hey. Right? <laughs> Can you not please? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm the same way. Oh, you're a paranoid schizophrenic too? I'm not schizophrenic. Oh my gosh, I love this. How nice this is to have a civilized meal in such a, a beautiful place. It's been so long. I mean, I just, uh, I want to thank you, even if we don't end up working together. We are working together. Let's go inside. inside. Not inside. Thank you. Yes. Frank. <laughs> Frank. Songs. Yeah. I understand. If my, uh, if mine brought strangers into our situation, I wouldn't be happy either. But of all the people he could have found on the radio, we're actually decent people just trying to get by. Well, aren't I the lucky one? There's stuff we have in the QZ that you don't have here. Books, medicine, machine parts. We can help each other and get that gun out of my face. We're self-sufficient here. That fence has got a year on it. Tops. <laughs> I can get you 10 spools of high tensile aluminum. Last you the rest of your life. You gotta work together, Bill. Come on. You come back. We'll trade. All right. We should, uh, we should use codes for the radio in case anyone's listening. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Ladies, trouble. Edra's never gonna come up here. And you're well protected against stray infected. But sooner or later, there'll be raiders. And they'll beat that fence and your tripwires. They'll come at night, quiet and armed. We'll be fine. I am loving this episode so far so much. Pick it up. I, <laughs> I am so that. Bill. <laughs> Back when I used to run a lot, I'd get cramps really easily and that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it. <laughs> Oh. oh! I traded Joel and Tess one of your guns for a packet of seeds. Which gun? Uh oh. <laughs> a little one. <laughs> oh my gosh. The little things. <laughs> this is so emotional. I'm getting emotional over two men eating strawberries. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Getting older faster than you. Oh, I like you older. <laughs> older means we're still here. True. I was never afraid before you showed up. Nothing but strawberries. <laughs> right. No! Shit. Damn, dude. I have copies of all, of all the keys. Call Joel. You can't be here alone. No. 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 Call okay. Joel. Okay. Call it's Joel. Okay. He'll take care of you. No. Let me bring you inside. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Oh. I knew a time jump was coming, obviously, to present day, but like. <laughs> That just hit me so hard. Beautiful. Did you take your pills? Oh, no. One orangey, <clears throat> a little whitey, big roundy. That's so cute. Oh, look at the painting on the wall in the back. I don't want you falling asleep in the chair. I won't. You will, and then your feet get blue. No. I'm not fighting about it. Back in I bed. I promise you I'm going to stay up. Why? Because this is my last day. What if we find a doctor? What if What if someone shows up who can help? Who's coming, Bill? The door-to-door -door MRI salesman? There wasn't anything to cure this before the world fell apart. I've made up my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you the every day was a wonderful gift from God speech. I've had a lot of bad days, but I've had 
more good days with you than with anyone else. Just give me one more good day. Starting now, make me some toast. <laughs> <laughs> then take me to the boutique where I'll pick outfits for us. We'll get married. And you'll cook a delicious dinner. Then you will crush all of these up, put them in my wine. I will drink it. Then you will take me by my hand, bring me to our bed, and I will fall asleep in your arms. <laughs> I can't. Do you love me? Yes. Then love me the way I want you to. <sighs> Gotta let him go out the way he wants to. Dear. <laughs> that Kleenex stuck to me. <sighs> this is like the start of the movie up, except a whole hour longer. Will it be enough? Yeah. Why are there already pills in the bottle? Enough to kill a horse. This isn't the tragic suicide at the end of the play. I'm old. I'm satisfied. And you were my purpose. I do not support this. Oh, I should be furious. But from an objective point of view, it's incredibly romantic. <laughs> Take me to bed. I feel like I've barely talked during this reaction. Um, <laughs> I'm just taking it all in. I love the slow pace of this episode. It's so good. What the fuck? Bill? Frank? Stay there. You hear anything, you see anything, yell. It's from Bill. To whomever, but probably Joel. I figured I fall under whomever. So they're dead? Mm hmm If you find this, please do not come into the bedroom. We left the window open so the house wouldn't smell, but it will probably be a sight. I'm guessing you found this, Joel, because anyone else would have been electrocuted or blown up by one of my traps. <laughs> <laughs> Take anything you need. The bunker code is the same as the gate code, but in reverse. I never liked you, but still. It's like we're friends, almost. And I respect you. So I'm gonna tell you something because you're probably the only person who will understand. I used to hate the world and I was happy when everyone died, but I was wrong because there was one person worth saving. That's what I did. I saved him, then I protected him. That's why men like you and me are here. We have a job to do. And God help any motherfuckers who stand in our way. I leave you all of my weapons and equipment Use them to keep... Stay here. Oh, what an emotional episode. So good, though. Show me your arm. I just finished making a truck battery. It's charging right now. I have a brother out in Wyoming. He's in some kind of trouble, and I'm heading out there to find him. He used to be a firefly. And my guess is he knows where some of them are out there. Maybe they can get you to wherever this lab is. All right. Listen about Tess. If I'm taking you with me, there's some rules you got to follow. Rule one, you don't bring up Tess, ever. You don't tell anyone about your condition. They won't think it through. They'll just shoot you. You do what I say when I say it. We clear? Yes. God, I can't handle how emotional that letter was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bill was prepared. <laughs> this guy was a genius. Why was the music on? If you didn't reset the countdown every few weeks, this playlist would run over the radio. 80s. I didn't realize the radio from the first episode was the radio with Bill. They need bigger backpacks. <laughs> they have hot water. I'm taking a shower. You should. And you're showering. Both of you should, Seriously. yes. Well, why don't you look pretty?
pretty. Shut up. <laughs> She's so happy. <laughs> it's your first time in a car? It's like a spaceship. Seatbelt. Mm -hmm. Seatbelt. So cool. <laughs> oh, I'm really curious where they filmed all this. I don't recognize it. <sighs> Not a window shot. Oh, man. <laughs> If this is the final shot of the whole episode, what a way. And this is their bedroom, isn't it? It is. <sighs> wow. 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 I... <sighs> Damn, dude. If you enjoyed that reaction, please let me know by hitting that like button down below. All right, now that the episode is over, I know that I for sure want to talk about the big differences between the game and the show for this episode in particular, so that will be at the very end of this video, and it is time stamped out for those of you that don't want to know anything specific about the game. But for now, spoiler-free review. Here we go. This episode is 10 out of 10. This show is 10 out of 10, and I honestly feel like when all is said and done, this show is going to be my favorite show of all time, period. I've been saying all along that I really love how much this show focuses on the details, and once again, we got plenty of that in that episode, so I think I can safely say that we're just gonna keep getting that in every episode all the way through to the end, and I am so here for it. But more importantly, in this episode, we got to focus on two people, their connection, and how they are making life work for them in this world. We have Bill, who is very survivalist, kind of conspiracy theory, kind of a man, very pessimistic at times. And then we have Frank, who is very much on the optimistic side of things, loves the little things in life, wants to actually live life, and he cares about connections and people, and they contrast so well and it was just really great getting to spend all this time with them. Frank living that way definitely had influence on Bill and he was able to show him just how powerful love and human connection can be, especially in a post-apocalyptic scenario where it was really just the two of them in that town, nobody else and then they met Joel and Tess. Nick Offerman and Murray Bartlett absolutely shined in this episode. Holy moly, I am blown away by their performances here. Their acting was just phenomenal, especially when they aged up. They acted aging so well, and I also have to give mega props to the makeup department because it looked so realistic. Like, I couldn't tell. I almost couldn't tell that it was makeup. Like, it was just, it was so good. But yeah, the line delivery, the facial expression acting, the body language, just everything was so on point. I have nothing bad to say about either of their performances whatsoever. There are a lot of specific moments that I really enjoyed and that will stick with me. First, I love when Frank, like, comforted Bill in a moment of vulnerability when he admitted that he has never done anything like this before with any man. The way that Nick acted that vulnerability too and kind of like being shy was very well done. Bill giggling in happiness when he took a bite of a strawberry. Such a wonderful scene and just a really good moment and you really take for granted that kind of stuff and that was easily his first strawberry since the outbreak happened, since before the outbreak happened and you could just see the joy in experiencing that and I love that so much. I love that he told Frank that he was never afraid before Frank showed up. The emotions that Nick acted on Bill's face when Frank was explaining that it was going to be his last day and here's how he wanted the day to go. Very emotional, very moving loved it. And finally, Bill admitting to Frank that he had also consumed pills and that he was fully satisfied by his life. He was also ready to go. I did not expect that whatsoever. Did not see that coming. It was very emotional. Hit hard. This relationship between them taking up most of this episode was unexpected, but I absolutely loved it. This episode is just phenomenal TV, phenomenal writing, a phenomenal relationship, and just so so good. Other things about this episode that I enjoyed that have nothing to do with Bill and Frank. First, I really like Joel explaining more of how the outbreak happened to Ellie. Just getting more details on that was really awesome. I loved that Ellie found and took tampons because I feel like a lot of TV shows and movies don't ever really touch on that or show that in any way. And the thing is, the apocalypse does not care about your periods. Your periods are still going to happen. So it was such a brief moment, but I just really love that they included that in there. I'm really glad that there were still infected shown in this episode, although very briefly. The makeup job that was done on that particular infected person that was crushed under the debris was really, really good. And just the care that was taken with the zoom in on his face and Ellie slicing into the forehead and then showing her stabbing him. I think that was the first infected person that Ellie has killed. So that was really cool. 
I fully expected that infected person to jump out of the debris and run after her. So seeing the way it did actually play out was just really awesome. The music in this episode was so, so good, especially during the scenes with Bill and Frank. The camera work was excellent. Focus on the details, of course, were just so superb to me. And the acting from everyone was absolutely incredible. I don't know that this will happen, but my fingers are crossed that we do get a little bit more of Bill and Frank in future episodes just by way of flashbacks. I think that that would be really fun, but if it doesn't happen, I'm not going to be upset by it. I think that this episode just really, really, really shined on the two of them and I am 100% satisfied by this. All right, now I'm gonna dive into my opinion on the differences between this episode and how it plays out in the game. So if you don't want game spoilers at all with the story, uh, feel free to exit now. And if you are clicking off this video, uh, thank you so much for watching it. I appreciate you and we'll see you in the next reaction video. Fellow Last of Us fans and people who don't care to know game story spoilers, man, oh man, oh man. I was not expecting so much time with Bill and Frank. I genuinely thought we were gonna get maybe half an episode. I did know that we were getting Frank and I was excited for that because obviously in the game, we actually don't get to meet him. We just find his dead body. So to see this episode was just so, so good. I certainly did not expect to get like an origin story for them. I did not expect to spend their whole life together and get glimpses and time jumps the way that they did it. But oh my gosh, it was handled so beautifully. And I really, really, really love the changes that they made for the show. I personally think that if they had taken what happened in the game and done it exactly like that for the TV show, I wouldn't have felt anything. I wouldn't have been emotionally connected or involved, and I think it would have been a lot more boring, to be honest, and then, well, that's just how I feel, but not to mention, I never wanted this TV show to simply just be Joel and Ellie running around, killing infected, looting stuff like the way that it happens in the game. Like for a successful adaptation from a game to a TV show, you do have to involve a lot more of these types of scenes. You can't just always have combat-like fighting happen, and to take Bill and Frank, two very minor characters in the game, and really expand on them in this way, 10 out of 10. Like, this was just done so well. To drive the story forward, all we needed was Joel and Ellie to get the truck, and that happened, but the steps leading up to that could easily be changed for TV, and that is exactly what they did and they ran with it, and I love the changes. Because in the game, Bill being such an asshole and such a pessimistic man shows Joel that if you act that way, you're just surviving. You're not actually living your life. It's really not gonna get you anywhere. So for the show to kind of adjust that and show that like connection and love and protecting someone and just making things a lot more optimistic and kind of showing Joel that instead of showing him pessimism, like basically the game showed Joel how not to be and the show is showing Joel how he should be. And I just love that subtle change. Now, I know some people out there are probably gonna be upset that we did not get Bill and Ellie meeting and bickering and hating each other. And like, I get that, but personally, I don't think that's really necessary to show. <laughs> I don't think it's something we really needed and I'm happy with the changes that they made. To essentially replace that by getting to see Frank, know him, see the time that they spent together, I just think it was so much better. And let's be honest, that, really couldn't have been done in the game without making the game so much longer. Now granted, part one could have been much longer because part two is way longer than part one. But still, I think in 2013, Neil Druckmann just probably felt like that wasn't necessary to do. But the show allowed Neil the opportunity to flesh out Bill and Frank a lot more, probably in such a way that he just didn't have the time for or wouldn't hold people's interest in the game necessarily. I also appreciate the changes to Bill's character now. Uh, that one time jump, that first one where I went three years later to see Bill and Frank arguing. I'm glad that they kept that in because obviously that kind of alludes to the game and that's one of the reasons why uh, Frank and Bill just didn't get along anymore <laughs> was because of the way that Bill was acting in that scene. So I'm glad that they showed that, but at the same time, I'm glad that then Bill's character changed to not be that way anymore because of Frank's love for him and his love for Frank. And as for Bill's death, easily able to write that in because of the fact that once Joel and Ellie get the truck, we never see Bill again. So really, we don't shouldn't really care whether he lives or dies. And I think him dying alongside Frank was just a very elegant way to go. And like Frank said, it is romantic. <laughs> I also think that it was a lot nicer getting to read a letter from Bill to Joel instead of reading a letter from Frank to Bill that was just covered in not nice things. <laughs> all right, now that that is all out of the way, I turn it to you. Please leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this episode. I cannot wait to read your comments. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to my YouTube subscribers. 
to my Adventure Club members over on Patreon for the support and thank you to you for watching today. And if you are not yet subscribed and you want to, click here. And if you want to continue on watching something else, click on over here. Thank you, thank you, and we will see you in the next reaction video. Take care.